producers how are you guys doing today in this video i'll be making a beat like Choi boy as requested on twitter if you aren't already following me on twitter then definitely do so and anyways let's just go ahead and get started so right off the bat i already have a drum pattern i was just working on this off camera and it's just a kick and a clap uh, this is what the clap sounds like right here this is what the kick sounds like both of them are from my Hip Hop Essentials kit. And first things first, I'm going to come up with a bass line. And I'm going to use an 808 from my 808 Essentials kit. Um, recently, I came out with a bunch of samples for it. And these are wave samples. And I extended them, so I'll just use one of those. I use the stupid 808. Um, this is what our drum pattern sounds like. So pretty basic. Um, but for the 808, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in a little bit late. I'm going to bring it in on the second kick. let's go ahead and find a different placement for it a different note I should say so let's do a G and then we'll go down to a D and then we'll go up to a C maybe I just want to see what this sounds like and if you don't have headphones you're not going to hear this so definitely put those on what I can do is actually bring this up an octave and then we'll work up here. Let's do another G. do a D and a C all right let's bring this C in a little bit more uh, now what I'm going to do is bring this back down but as you can tell, it's almost inaudible. So what I'm going to do is get a saturator. And I'm going to put this on soft sign. And I'm uh, slightly going to boost the bass and the depth. And this is just saturating the sound so that it's more audible, has more higher harmonics, I guess. Okay, let's bring this kick right here. So typical kind of Choi Boy 808. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make something, we're gonna make a sound with massive. Um, and it's gonna be kind of our lead sound. So I'm gonna get, first of all, I'm gonna get a square saw wave. Um, just as long as I get this square, it doesn't really matter. You can do basically any one of these um, these wavetables that has the square in it. I'm going to lower the intensity a little bit. So it's a little bit softer sounding. And then next I'm going to uh, pull up the attack a little bit so it's softer sounding. And actually, I'm going to turn up the intensity just a little bit more. Let me play with some different uh, wavetables. All right, I think that's good. Um, now what I'm going to do is get 
on oscillator or go into the oscillator tab and turn up the vibrato so vibrato is basically a uh, pitch wobble and massive has a vibrato section right here so the depth is how much pitch so very high depths is going to mean that it's wobbling at very uh, long distances in terms of pitch like it's a really long kind of wave I mean tall kind of wave so we want just a little bit not too much and I'm going to turn up the rate and now we have this pitch wobble Um, so next what I'm going to do is let me think about this I want this to be a shorter kind of sound so I'm gonna take down the level so now the volume is slowly going down to negative infinity which is silence it's going down to silence then I'm gonna turn down the decay so it goes down faster and then we have this plucky kind of sound uh, now I'm going to modulate the pitch a little bit and I'm going to make it so that the pitch comes up at the start and let's, let's make this more subtle. So really the pitch is starting at negative 12 and then it's coming back down or technically back up to zero which is our normal pitch. If I didn't have the level all the way down it would stay at negative 12. So it's important you kind of have it come back down if that makes any sense. I'm going to add some reverb to it just so that it kind of fills up the space a little bit better. Alright, so now we're going to play a melody. Wow, that was pretty good actually. Yeah, I like that. Let's record that. Okay, that last part I kind of messed up. So let's flip these notes around. And I want to turn up the release on this sound so that it fades out for longer. Let's mess with this vibrato a little bit more. Uh, make sure it sounds. really wonky sounding uh, now let's go to the voicing I'm gonna turn up the pitch cutoff I guess and we're gonna turn up the voices okay that's way too much um, what I meant to do was just one why does that sound so weird Oh, okay, I get it. Never mind. Put this at zero. So, super loud, so I'm going to turn this down. And let's turn on a uh, mono chorus. I'm really just experimenting with stuff. Uh, really, what I just did is I added a bunch of voices and I detuned the pitch.
Now, to be honest, I don't know what chorus mono does, but it adds like a weird kind of vibrato as well. All right, we're just gonna leave this alone. And I don't like the ending of this. So what I'm gonna do is change it around a little bit. I may have to do some changes to it, like off camera or something, but for now, I'm going to get another sound. Uh, I'm gonna go again with Massive, and this time I'm gonna go with my Future Beats kit for Massive. I'm gonna go with the lead. Go ahead and listen. That sounds so good. Honestly, I'm just coming up with stuff on the spot right now. And so far this sounds super good. I'm gonna listen to some other sounds as well just to make sure there's not anything better. Kind of weird sounding. All right. Anyways, I'm gonna come up with something off camera with this lead, because honestly, I don't know where I want to go with the melody for this, and I don't want to sit here and keep experimenting on camera and I'll be right back. All right, so here's the melody that I created. And next, what I wanted to do was add some chords. So what I'm going to use for this is Serum, and we're gonna create a pad sound. I'm gonna create a super saw. And to be honest, um, I don't need that many voices. I'm probably gonna change the sound later, but for now I'm just gonna record the idea that I had. I was playing around and the chord progression I came up with went like this. So, something like that. up higher So I'm just kind of experimenting right now. So I think that's good. Now what we're going to do is make this a different kind of sound. 
first thing I'm doing is turning up the release. And let's try a different wave shape. Maybe this will sound good as like a sine wave. It's very subtle. It's a lot better than the saw already. Um, what I'm going to do is add a pitch envelope. So I'm going to go with envelope 2 because we're not using it. Envelope 1 is automatically for the volume, so I want to get a different one. Uh, and I'm going to apply that to the fine pitch of the, of the um, oscillator 1. And what I'm going to do is turn down the, the sustain level, turn down the decay. And instead of fine pitch, I'm actually going to go with uh, semitones. It's a larger interval. to see what this would sound like if I had vibrato on it. Sounds kind of weird right now, but if we turn this into a different kind of LFO that's not synced to the BPM, maybe it'll sound better. Yeah, never mind. I'm not going to do that. I don't know why, but I can't type the values in. I have an older version of Serum. I still haven't updated, so it's kind of strange. Um, I want to update, but if I ever make a pack, I want this to be compatible with the older versions and stuff. So that's the only reason why I haven't updated. Anyways. Let's take this to a lower octave. And let's maybe try adding another oscillator, basic shapes, and we're gonna do, we're gonna turn on the level so it's not on, and I'm gonna do FM from B. So now this, this uh, wave shape is oscillating, is modulating the first one. and it creates a completely different sound. Let's try messing with this. So I think that's all right. I'm gonna lower the volume a little bit. And next, we're gonna keep working on these drums um, because they're very simple right now. First thing I'm gonna do is get a hi-hat. I'm probably gonna have to cut forward because uh, it's gonna be a lot of just moving notes around and experimentation. Uh, but for this, I'm just gonna get any kind of hi-hat. Uh, let's get... Something like this. All right. So we're gonna start out with a very fast hi-hat roll.
and we're gonna do triplets so I hit command 3 so now I'm in a triplet grid Alright, so now we're going to add another roll right here. And I don't know what it is about his hi-hats, but they sound like, they just sound different to me. Like his patterns. And when we add a stutter effect, it's really going to add to this pattern. Alright, and right here we're going to add another roll. Sounds like such a weird beat. It doesn't really sound like Troy Boy. Hopefully we can turn things around. Um, I'm gonna get a frequency shifter because I feel like this hi-hat would sound better if it was higher pitched. And really this just transposes the frequency. It's not really transposition, but it kind of changes the frequency of the sound. I'm gonna lower the volume as well. Now we're going to need some more kind of uh, typical Choi Boy sounds like uh, we're going to need like a saw kind of bass. Um, let me think. So what I want to do is take two saw waves. I'm going to have one be an octave higher. I'm going to play this primarily at a lower pitch. Let's actually go around and try different wave tables. Alright, I'm going to get a uh, a square wave, not a square wave, a saw wave for this first one. And then I'm going to put a filter on here. And we're going to actually let's take off the filter. Um, and we're just going to place a note. We're going to place a G, actually a, a C. Let's try different notes. That's good. I want it to play until the snare or until the clap and then stop. So as you can tell, if I get this clap, wherever it is, and I solo it, as soon as the clap hits, I stopped playing that note. We're actually going to get an auto filter. And I'm going to slowly raise the auto filter. If I can get this to work. Let's 
So as you can tell, we're trying to get a sound like this. Thing is, I don't know what note to play this at. It's kind of a weird sound. Let's keep working on this. I may have to go off camera and try to come up with something. Let's do FM from sub. And we're gonna, we're gonna turn on the sub and get a sine wave. Sounds cool. Let's try different pitches. And of course, I want to have some distortion on here. It's kind of loud, so I'm going to turn on the volume. Try this at a C again. Sounds so weird. All right, anyways, I'm gonna come right back and we're gonna keep working on this. All right, so I finished working on this bass that we were creating the chords for. They're not really chords, they're just stacks uh, of the same note. So right here, as you can tell, I have a G1 and a G0. So these are different octaves. Um, the only uh, the only place where I actually changed the note was on this one. As you can tell, there's a D sharp and there's an A sharp. But basically, this is what our uh, bass sounds like now. I, I also added this plug, and I'll explain what that does. I just turned it off right now, though. <laughs> So that's uh, the bass line, and I added this plugin called Shaper Box, and it's basically like gross beat, but it works as a VST in any other DAW than FL Studio. I know you can get it. Uh, I know you can get gross beat for Ableton and stuff like that, but I just got uh, Shaper Box because it has like a bunch of other um, effects like pan, filter, and all that. And basically, what this is doing is it's uh, playing it's going back in time and like playing the same hit uh, in a different rhythm so this is what it sounds like with the shaper box so basically this axis right here is like the time as you can tell there's a negative two fourths which is, ah, there's a negative two fourths which is one half and uh, basically it's going back a half a bar each time and it's kind of chopping this thing up um, but now what I want to do is uh, add some vocals to this like not actually like my vocals uh, but some chops and hopefully find something that makes sense for this song and then I'm gonna arrange this I'm gonna basically call it a day um, so let's just go ahead and get two audio tracks I'm just gonna call this chops and then this is just gonna be uh, for browsing through the samples and I actually have um, this black octopus kit uh, it's called siren and it's vocals by Vila uh, it's something that you can purchase and we're just gonna browse through different samples it doesn't really matter what octave I mean sorry what scale it's in because we're just going to 
pitch it anyways so it's gonna I'm gonna make it work anyways so we have this right here so it's warped right now so we need to turn that off don't know how long it's been hmm don't know how long it's been all right let's turn on the volume a little bit don't know how long i don't know it's not working is this in a major scale or something yeah it seems like it's in a major scale so uh, we can't really make it fit got to get a minor scale so let's just look at C minor let me dry it's way too long this may take a long time I'm just gonna skip forward most likely All right, so I'm back and I chose two vocal samples. Haven't done anything yet to them. I just dragged them in. Uh, this is what they sound like right here. This is the first one. Uh, let me make sure that they're both unwarped. So that's the first one and this is the second one. Eyes on you, they've got their eyes on you. I'm honestly probably just gonna use this first part where she says eyes on you. Um, and probably chop it up even further but uh, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to drag these in to our chops right here to our chop channel and by default or just how they are it's not really gonna work um, so let me just play I actually experimented and placed this one right here this is what it sounds like it doesn't sound good right now So I felt like it had potential at that position, but we just need to time it better. So this is where I'm going to um, do a little bit of warping and stretching. Um, let me just solo a few tracks so that we have the reference. All right, so right off the bat, it seems a little bit delayed. Um, and actually, first of all, it's 128 BPM, as you can tell by the title. So what we're going to do is we're going to warp it and we're going to type in 128. Now, the thing is, at 128, it's going to be extremely stretched. Um, so what we want to do is actually we want to hit this divide by two button and it's going to stay in time, but it's just going to be half time. I mean, double time, basically, because it's going to be playing at half the amount of time in half the amount of time if that makes any sense if I hit times two it's gonna stretch it to twice the length and really this is because BPM can be divided or multiplied by any um, power of two when it's going to stay in tempo so by warping it now it's going to Ableton is gonna stretch this to fit our 71 BPM track you just got to let Ableton know what BPM your clip is. That's how warping basically works. And I know it can be confusing at first. Um, so basically, type in the value of the BPM into the clip. And Ableton is going to keep that in mind. And then it's going to stretch your clip to go ahead and fit your master tempo. Um, all right, anyways, let's just go ahead and listen to this. Oh, yeah, and we want to go into complex mode because beat mode is going to uh, chop it up and we don't want that we want this to play smoothly so still a little bit delayed so what I'm going to do is bring it in bring it in a little bit and again let's solo a few tracks so that um, we have not too much going on at the same time so let me bring this in even more even more so notice that her voice changes pitch at each kind of main rhythmic point so let me play it let me chop this up real quick so as you 
as you can tell it changes at each main point and that's what we want um, and all we had to do was warp it and move it forward a little bit let's turn on the volume on this and next we have this sample right here let's go ahead and chop out that first part where uh, she says eyes on you eyes on you um, and I'm gonna place this randomly just right here I and let's go ahead and solo some other tracks eyes on you. Eyes on you. I again we need to warp this so let's go 128 again and then of course it's gonna be super stretched because we're at a very slow BPM so we're gonna hit divide by two eyes on so that could work but I'm gonna try different combinations and chops and stuff that's cool all right let's go complex mode and Again, everything complex mode so that we don't get any weird artifacts from the beats mode. That's that's weird. Alright, so just kind of experimenting right now. Again, I always like to skip forward um, in these parts where I'm experimenting because it's just a bunch of trial and error. I'm just using my ears to be honest. It's, it's still kind of weird. I don't like this idea. Scratch that. Let's go ahead and go back to what we were doing before with the full chop. Uh, if I can go back that far. Alright. So let's go ahead and take this. Um, Eyes on you. Eyes on you. Eyes on you. All right, so as you can tell, this part is a little bit early. I want to put that a little bit more delayed. Actually, never mind. It's pretty. It's pretty close. I think it needs to be pushed forward. Actually. I think. I don't know why. It just sounds weird at the end. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop that out. I may put like actually never mind I was gonna like put auto tune on it so that it's even more um, electronic sounding So strange, but hopefully it works out. Eyes on you. Eyes on you. Eyes on you. Again, we're gonna have to do some timing stuff, like make sure this is all being timed correctly. Uh, I want to try taking this. Eyes on 
on you, eyes on you. All right, so I have an idea. New, 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 new. They've got their eyes on you. They've got their. They've got their eyes on you. New, 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 new. Eyes on you. New, new. All right. Kind of strange. Hopefully it works. All right, so with this, um, I'm gonna hit this E right here, and I'm gonna go to transposition, and then I'm going to have like a pitch down effect at the end. Okay, that's too aggressive. So strange. All right, so this is sounding kind of weird. It's not working. Upwards. Honestly, don't know. Alright, right here, we're gonna have to uh, bring it forward or bring it back, I should say. Same thing right here. so strange it's like it sounds corny to me like it's not that it doesn't work it just sometimes chops are they just don't sound right because of the way the lyrics are or how they're being sung so it's like an extra hard kind of challenge to find stuff that works um, with chops like it goes beyond just melody it's also um, about the emotion of the vocals and how they work with the rest of the song so all right this one is a little bit delayed all right and this one i'm going to take this to negative 10. All right, and I EQ'd out the bottom, so I'm gonna bring back a little bit of the lows. And then with this, I will bring the EQ to this one too. This one. Except I'm gonna cut out more lows on this one. All right, let's try that. I don't like how she says, <laughs> she says new instead of you. So I'm gonna chop out the front of these samples. New, new. Sounds like she's saying new. New, new, new. There we go. New, new, new. Yeah, like right here. New, new. Now, sometimes what I like to do, this may flood the mix a lot. Um, so if I actually have to arrange this song, I'll have to take out a few instruments, maybe the bass. Eyes on you, you. Eyes on you, you. Eyes on you. 
and I'll put like a uh, ping pong delay on it to make it sound more wet. Yo, that's actually so cool when you turn up the dry, uh, the dry, I mean the wetness, and you just keep the effect. It makes it sound like an ambience rather than an actual vocal. Especially right here. Alright, so I have a great idea. I'm going to insert a return track. Um, and I'm going to take this ping pong delay. I'm going to copy it and put it to the return track. And this is going to be our delay track. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to send this to the delay when it gets to this part right here. That way, we have like this cool kind of uh, ambience coming in. And then for the rest of the vocals, we'll have it like 45%. We may even turn it off on the main vocals. So basically, each time it reaches this part right here where the chops uh, start being cut up right here, where I made those cuts and the pitch and all that, it's going to be sent to this um, track right here which has only pure delay on it. And it adds like this cool ambience. Maybe even add some reverb to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command G and I'm going to create a reverb chain. Call this reverb. Oops, uh, reverb, and then I call this delay. Now, basically, how chains work is that they're two separate tracks. So, normally in a track, it goes side by side, so each effect goes into the next one. But with chains, it's like a stack. So, now our signal is being s split, um, it's being sent to a delay and a reverb separately. So, right here, I'm gonna have a reverb. Um, I'll just keep like default settings uh, with some spin maybe. Actually, yeah, just default settings and a lot of release time. And it adds like this really cool ambience. Now with the chops, we're gonna have a little bit of delay. Um, and I guess we can have some reverb on there. We're also going to create a chain. So basically by creating a chain, you're creating a new stack. So the signal is now being doubled up and one's going to the reverb, the other's going to the, um, to the delay. how she says you but you know what we're just gonna deal with it I'm gonna call this done for the chops at least I'm gonna call this vocals um, so that's just the basic vocal chop um, kind of tutorial I guess that's kind of how I just do things it's really a lot of trial and error and things by ear a lot of people criticize me whenever I don't put things in the video but they don't realize it's just to save time and to not be trying things on camera all the time but uh, next up what I wanted to do was add a add the percussion right now we have uh, some basic drums like a kick and a clap but what I want to do is also have you know cowbells um, organic sounds and maybe wood blocks whatever Troy boy likes to use so I'll be right back and I'll fill up this drum rack with some sounds all right so I actually have a shaker right here um, I have some perks in this drum rack that I chose. And I pitched some of them so that they would be kind of more in tune with the song. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw this pattern in. Um, I honestly don't know what I'm going to draw because last time the application I was uh, using to record crashed. Um, so I, I had to start over right now. Uh, I'm just going to place this right here, first of all. I'll 
I'll put that right there. We're just going to repeat that. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is get uh, a swing pattern. So I'll go to user or the core library and I'll go to swing and groove and I will apply uh, a little bit of swing to this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And finally, what I'm gonna do is I'll try one last sound. Um, if I turn on this saw sound that we have and I turn on the chords and the kick and the clap, uh, as well as the main lead and the perks, what you'll notice is that there's a period of silence after the bass. like right here. So what I wanna do is add like some sort of filler sound. Usually he'll use like a voice and he'll have it be really low pitched and it'll say something like a random phrase. I don't really have any phrase sounds. I could speak something in, but I feel like I wouldn't like it at all. Um, I really don't know what to say. So what I'll do is I'll try to fill it in with um, some sort of ARP sound, so I'm gonna get a saw, a digital saw wave from operator. Let's go ahead and un let's unmute it. So just the basic saw, I'm gonna go to voices, I'm gonna go with one voice, then to the pitch and put on gliding. And have some uh, very low glide time on it. Then I'm gonna get a ARP MIDI effect. And we're just gonna play a chord, so. If I listen to our chords right here. Yeah, that's a good chord. So we're gonna take that, I just copied it, and I'm going to apply that to the ARP track. That's kinda cool. And we're gonna turn the ARP to a faster rate. And we're gonna go up with the steps. And I wanna turn up the glide time a little bit actually. Why is that not working? Oh, I think it's cause the gate is too short. have some EQ on here cut out all of the lows and I'll have the EQ come down like that and I'll have a ping pong delay I love this effect so much. Oh, 
I'll put that right there actually. Let's make this go down an octave, or at least take the top note down. All right, so I think that's gonna be it. Now we just need to arrange it. I would add one more sound, but this sound, this song is extremely saturated right now. It has a ton of stuff going on, so we're definitely gonna have to take sounds out of certain parts and put them back in. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a nice selection of time right here and hit command I. I'm gonna get the chords and I'm gonna take them down an octave. Actually no that sounds so weird. I'll take that, put that there. Um I'll get these vocals right here. Eyes on you. They've got their eyes on you. You eyes on you. And then I'll take out the vocals right after that. Um, obviously, he doesn't have the hi hats come in right off the bat. It usually waits like eight bars, I think. Um, arrangement is super self-explanatory. It's a lot of just um, bringing elements in and out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get our kick. take out the kick right here eyes on you. take a clap or the clap and put it right here eyes on you. Eyes on you. You. Eyes on you. and I'm gonna get the perks as well eyes on This ARP is super loud. So this tutorial is taking a long time. I might skip forward. I'm just spreading this out. I'm gonna hit Command uh, Shift. I'm gonna hit Command L first to select the area. It's already been selected. So let's say the loop was right here. I can't speak. Let's say the loop was right here. If I hit Command L, it would select that area. Then I would hit Command Shift L. Then I hit Command D to duplicate that whole kind of selection right there. Um, now what I'm gonna do is take all of this and put it right here. I'm gonna enable this right there. Um, now with this uh, base that we have, I'm gonna turn on the shaper thing. This was just a preset um, where it just keeps going back in time and playing the same sample. So I'm gonna turn that on at this point right here. And um, okay, so I think that's good. Turn that on right there. Uh, turn it on here and here. Um, now what I'm going to do is obviously take the kick and keep extending it get the clap i'll get rid of the last clap uh right here and with the hi-hats i'm going to select this area turn it on and have it kind of fade in just need the volume do this 
Um, now we just need to copy all this stuff. Uh, I'll take the square and put it right here. All right, so this is kind of like our intro right here. percussions percussion sounds for a little bit um, I'll bring them in like right here I'll get rid of the tambourine and I will get rid of this uh, sound right here oh wait that's the wrong one I'm getting rid of the, the lead And I'll get rid of this saw. And I'll take the kick out right here. I might actually bring that bass in right here. Um, anyways, that's just a basic arrangement kind of thing. I'm gonna come back and create a sound for the intro right here. Uh, and that's kind of gonna fill up the space and we're gonna lead this in to the, um, to the drop. So I actually have a sample that I wanna add from the Hip Hop Essentials kit. Uh, let's see, where is that? Oh, I have so many like folders. Uh, it's a transition sound and it's a white noise sound. So I always hear it in his songs, but he has like a, a white noise kind of upwards transition before each drop, it feels like. feels kind of empty without the hi-hats so I don't know it feels it feels empty I'll just I'll figure that out later um but yeah basically I'll come back in a second I'll try to find a sound that I can add to the intro and I'll explain that all right so the intro is basically done all I did was add this pad from the future beats kit uh, this is what it sounds like pad number 16 and then I added the lead and I chopped it up so only the main kind of uh, melody parts were in there and I added a ton of reverb to it and I automated the reverb so it would turn off like right around the second part of the intro um, and that's basically all I did um, now I'm gonna go ahead and play this real quick uh, just the intro and then we're gonna do something with the shaper box VST um, in a little bit. And that's basically our intro. Um, now, something that you'll notice in his songs is that he always has those stutter effects, and there's a lot of VSTs for it. Um, I think he uses Tornado or something. I think it's from Sugar Bites. That's the name of the company. Um, you can do it with a plugin called Stutter Edit with Glitch 2, um, Effectrix, all those different plugins. But the one that I have is Shaper Box. I don't have any of the other ones. Um, and basically I just took a preset that sounded like it could kind of work 
rhythmically i just went into the presets and chose one so there wasn't really anything behind this um, but i'm gonna add it like right here uh, to the second part of the drop on the master and then we're gonna kind of fade it out slowly so what i'm gonna do is open up the master track real quick and kind of fade this out at about the second bar that kind of sounds like the type of stutter effect that he'd, he'd have I'm gonna keep like adding it in different locations and eventually um, it should sound all right so I'm just gonna mix this song now at this point we're basically done and I'll maybe add like a few elements or change a few things but it's not gonna be much and uh, yeah if you enjoyed this video then definitely subscribe for more let me know who else you want to see and leave a like if you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you guys next time